So the question is, why do children with ADHD have such a hard time falling asleep at night? I'm Brian Wisda, the creator of ADHD Lullaby. ADHD Lullaby is an album of music which combines music and neuroscience to specifically help children with ADHD fall asleep faster and stay asleep through the night. When we ask the question of why children with ADHD have such a hard time falling asleep at night, one of the things that we have to look at are the medications they're taking. Specifically, CNS stimulants, which stands for Central Nervous System Stimulants, such as Adderall or Ritalin or Concerta or Vivanase or Cotempla or any, any myriad number of brand name drugs or their generic equivalents, which are all based upon an amphetamine or methylphenidate, which is another type of amphetamine. And that falls into the drug category of a CNS stimulant. And the way CNS stimulants work is very easy to understand, but let's start, let's back up a second. Let's understand the human body. Because anytime we introduce a drug into the human body, whether it be nicotine, caffeine, uh, Ritalin, uh, could be marijuana, uh, it could be, um, a depressant such as alcohol, it changes our body and it changes something known as homeostasis. So what is homeostasis? Well, homeostasis is if you can imagine a line, it's a natural line or a point where our body likes to be at. So when we're resting, our body has a heart rate it likes. It has a, a breath rate it likes. Even the size of our pupils falls into this homeostasis line of, of normal, if you will. Our blood pressure, everything. The, and especially the rate at which our nervous system and our synapses fire. So when we introduce a drug, it changes our homeostasis. It has an effect on it. It pushes it up or down. In the case of a CNS stimulant like Adderall or Ritalin or Concerta, what essentially happens is the introduction of that drug into the human body pushes specific functions of our body up, if you will. So it specifically increases our heart rate, our blood pressure goes up, our pupils dilate. And so if we can imagine that homeostasis line that we're at, where we want to be, our body says, I want to be right at that homeostasis line. When we introduce this drug, what do you think happens? Well, it pushes our homeostasis or our bodily functions up, okay? And in pushing things up, what is occurring is the mind says, I don't want to be there. I don't want you to do that to me. I want to be where I'm at. And that's a key importance because what essentially then happens is the mind comes in and says, I'm going to do my best to maintain my homeostasis. And the mind in turn tries to slow things down. And this is where we get behavioral modification. So while a child with ADHD who's taking a, a stimulant medication throughout the day will be walking around with a higher than their normal heart rate and higher than their normal blood pressure, you'll notice their pupils are dilated, their mouths might be dry, a couple other, other things occur. The mind all the while is fighting against that change in homeostasis. And it's fighting against it by trying to slow the body down. Now think about that. If the mind is trying to slow the body down from up here, instead the mind's coming down like this, that's where we get that behavioral modification. And it works very well. It works very effective. And if we, if we think about the drug market of 2020, when this video is being produced, versus say Ritalin in the 1980s. When I was a child, kids would be on, kids that were on Ritalin were in the back of the room drooling on themselves because the drug was so powerful and they didn't truly understand it. Uh, furthermore, the advent of time release really hadn't been developed and perfected yet. So today we have these stimulant medications that have a huge time release feature to it. And this is also very important in understanding why we have that 
problem with our children who have ADHD and who are taking stimulant medications and getting to sleep to, at night. So essentially what happens, and, and this is really key, this is the, the extended release part is really, really key. And so when we ask the question, hey, or when somebody asks me the question, hey Brian, why is your album, ADHD Lullaby, so effective? The first thing we have to answer is, and we have to understand why our kids with ADHD aren't able to fall asleep with ease. And so let's, let's look at why that time release plays such a big factor. So if you can imagine again that homeostasis line, the body's being pushed up, if you will. And in pushing the body up, the mind is pulling it down. Now this is key. So think about time release. What do you think happens when that time release feature of that medication wears off? Well, our body starts to return to its natural homeostasis. Our heart rate will slow down from that elevated heart rate. Our blood pressure will begin to drop from that elevated blood pressure. Our pupils will start to constrict back down to normal and other functions will also start to fall within that natural homeostasis. Except that the drug has been active for so long in the body, 12 hours, typically with an extended release type medications, the mind yet doesn't know that the drug's not there. It's still expecting that drug to have that interaction with our, our bodies. And so the mind continues, even though the medication is starting to wear off, the mind continues to pull down. Ah, think about that. So homeostasis, elevated, but the mind is pulling down the whole way. So when homeostasis starts to drop back down to normal and the mind is continuing to pull itself down, sooner or later, we're gonna cross below natural homeostasis, all right? This is essentially where we get a crash effect from drinking too much caffeine. If we slam four cups of coffee, we find ourselves tired later. Why? Our body has overcorrected in its attempt to maintain homeostasis. And a child who's taken a CNS stimulant goes through the exact same cycle every single day that they're on that medication. So the mind continues to pull down and as sooner or later what happens is the body dips below that natural homeostasis line and the mind then goes, oh wait, this is bad. We need to stop this. And it's at that point that the mind dumps, if you will, into the body various chemicals. Now I don't know specifically what chemicals it's dumping, but it's gonna be serotonin, dopamine, etc. that it releases through the uh, pancreas and, and other systems adrenaline maybe too, to get that body back to its natural homeostasis. So you have a person whose internal functions are not really dropping below normal because of the drug. It's the mind pulling it down and then the mind dumping those chemicals back, those naturally synthesized chemicals back into the bloodstream to reinvigorate the body to find its homeostasis again. And this all happens right around the witching hour. I give my child a medication of, of a 12 hour medication. Let's say I give it to him at 7 a.m. when he wakes up or she wakes up. At 7 p.m. that medication is wearing off. By 8 p.m. they are wired and wide awake. Now think about that. What is it that we can actually do to fight this so the children get sleep at night? Do we give them more medications, like an Ambien or a Valium to get them to relax? I can't answer that for your child, but I can tell you that this is something that the body is fighting and going through this fight every single day that it's on a medication. And so finding what works for your child is actually very important because 
by finding what works for your child. And what I, what I really mean by finding what works for your child is you're finding something to help their body relax and return to its natural homeostasis. I'm Brian Wisda, the creator of ADHD Lullaby. And in my next video, I'll discuss why ADHD Lullaby is so effective at fighting this late day homeostasis imbalance, which is causing our children who take stimulant medications for ADHD to be wide awake and to have that struggle to get to sleep every night.